<laughs> oh. Oh, what's going on? It's been good. It's been really good. It's been nice, uh, you know, physically being able to get healthy and kind of get back in the swing of things. Um, been able to travel a little bit, do some stuff, and now we're, we're back rolling. It comes quick, but just excited to be back, obviously, with, with the guys that were here and some of the new guys in here. So it's, it's exciting to get everybody back together. When did you first feel like, hey, I'm 100% again? It took a while. I mean, I'd probably say March. You know, when March hit, I felt really good, like lifting and doing everything like totally normal. You know, I'd been so used to the back half of the season adjusting everything, whether it was workout or um, throwing or practice or whatever it was. You know, I, I gave myself, I would work out, but still modified. Um, but until March, I'd say I that's when I started to feel like 100% do the stuff that I normally do and can kind of get back in the kind of shape I want to be and train the way I wanted to. So yeah, it took a it took a little while. It must have been like in the no Gabe and, and Mitch. I know it hasn't been a lot of time, but what's your early impressions of, of those two guys? They seem great. Um, you know, Gabe seems just like a super hard worker from what I've heard about him. Um, he's a guy that, that likes to work, wants to work, really competitive, um, goes about his business the right way. Obviously, you know, we haven't got a chance really to work together much yet, but um that that's starting now so it'll be it'll be great to to see him move around and i know he's he's getting back healthy too so um mitch kind of similar deal i mean i've heard nothing but good things from um either people in buffalo or whether it's josh allen you know that's a uh, one of my friends obviously that quarterback over there he, he played with the last five years and they have a good relationship and um you know that's that's exciting to hear about their relationship and how they did things there and um, to have two guys from buffalo that really were their reputation speak really highly of them and, and how they carry themselves. So um, I think it's it's great additions for our team and it's going to raise the level of everybody's play around them too. Do you look forward to these workouts getting back in the building as a team? Definitely. You know, I, I think it's probably a different perspective for, I can't say I speak for everyone necessarily, but um, in general, I think our team has a really good um, feel for the off season and, and how to approach and how to attack it. And we have a lot of the guys that are here. I mean, almost everybody's here unless they can't be for whatever reason. Um, guys try to be here. So that's something that I appreciate. And then for me, you know, I, we live here year round. So I'm going to be training anyway. So it's nice to have all the guys back into town. One, just just friends with a lot of them. So it's nice having my buddies back. And then two, you get to actually work out together and, and do stuff and train and start to get your chemistry before training camp happens. So. There's a lot of benefits to it. Um, like I said, I'm here anyway, so I'm glad everybody's back and we get to all kind of do it together and, and train and work out and, and, and move towards where we want to be. So um, I think it's great. I'm always excited when we start back up. Trevor, what was some of the emphasis of the first meeting back of the off season ahead and then some priorities for the team between now and June? You know, just kind of recapping obviously last year and um, you know, you, you, you got to move on pretty quickly because it's a new year, you know, now it doesn't matter who won the Super Bowl last year. Now everyone's kind of turning the page and going on to 2024. So um, you move on, but you have to kind of recap. All right. It was, we only had that one team meeting right before we left to end our season last year. And you talk about it, but it's hard to digest that in one night before that meeting. So, um, you know, we talked about and address, address some of the things that happened, you know, maybe some things that we didn't do well, some things that we might have done okay and need to improve on just really everything we, we've done that the last two days and um, from coach Peterson's perspective from press's uh, perspective and then players you know some stuff too so it's been really good I think we're, we're heading in the right direction and we know what we need to do and we got to attack this off season and be really intentional um, there's there's very tangible things that we need to get better at obviously I'm not going to go into all the details right now but um, there's things we need to get better at you know for myself for us as an offense as a team um, and we kind of just put all those out there and, and now we're all on the same page of where we're heading, where we're going, what we need to work on. So I think it's it's necessary to do that at the beginning of the off season. So you're not just, the worst thing you wanna do is you don't wanna waste time. You don't wanna just come here and work out and go home and really not know where you're heading and what you wanna work on. So I think it was good to get everybody centered and know where we're, where we're going. Now that there's been time, how did you digest it uh, the last six weeks, especially of, of just everything that transpired? Yeah, it was obviously a disappointing season. Um, I mean, some of the stuff that I said after the year, but I, I think just being removed from it, it's a lot easier to see the good um, after the fact, not necessarily the good things that happened, but 
use the bad things as good and to, to make yourself better moving forward. I mean, there's just so many things that I learned last season, whether it's, you know, trying to stay healthy and, and dealing with some things that I haven't had to deal with in my career or not playing as consistent as I wanted to play and to finish the year um, to whatever it may be, maybe not meeting some expectations that we had for ourselves as a team, um, not playing well in big games, all these things that have gone through my head. I think you being removed from it, you can you can take stuff from that and use it to make you better. In the moment, it's hard to see the big picture. So I'm thankful for that. I mean, all the difficult times in my career, I mean, I think back to my rookie season has made me a lot better for it. Um, you just have to use it. So that's what I plan to do for from last season. And I think that's our approach as a team too. Um, it's a waste if you don't use it. You went through that experience and then you don't use it. It's, uh, it's just, it's double bad because it, it sucked going through it and then you didn't get better from it. So um, I think that's our, that's my mindset. That's our mindset moving forward and so many things to learn from. What did you think when you heard about Josh Allen's new contract? I was excited for him. Super excited. Obviously, one, the season he had, but just the guy that he's been, you know, he's been here for, he was here two years before I got here and the three years that I've been here, just consistent, one of the hardest workers on the team, dependable, um, you know, as a person in the locker room, the right type of guy you want. So he, he checks all the boxes that you want as a leader on your team and obviously a great player too. So I was just excited to get him back, you know, because there's a lot of teams that I'm sure would have loved to have Josh Allen on their team. So I'm excited that we got that done and he's, he's, he's going to be a Jag for a long time. Um, so I think that was, a, that was a big box checked for us and excited that he's, that he's here and obviously really happy for him on just the personal and life side of that's that's a big deal and can take care of his family for for forever for a long time so I'm, I'm excited for him and he definitely earned it you going into year four so is, you start thinking about your contract the potential extension you have had any talks with the Jags at all about any of it or you know? yeah I mean there's there's definitely been some conversations um you know as far as where that's at now it's not really my focus you know I'd love to Love to obviously be a Jag, so um, for as long as possible. We love it here, and I love where we're headed as an organization and, and feel like I'm just getting better every year, and uh, my best ball is definitely ahead of me. So from that standpoint, obviously, yeah, that, that would be great. But um, like you said, it's going into my fourth year. It's not like this is necessarily going to be my, my last season. You know, there's a lot that could happen. Um, so not really my focus right now. At the end of the day, my job isn't going to change whether I get extended or, or not before this season. Uh, my job is to go win games and, and to be the best I can be for this team so we can have a chance to win a Super Bowl. So um, even if I you get the, the contract extension, that's still my job, even more so. You know, there's even more expectation and pressure on that. So for me, I have the same focus and the same mindset. Um, I can't lie. Obviously, it would be nice to have to have that done and, you know, feel good about it. But no, it's not really the focus right now. I know where we're at. I know where we're heading and I know what I have to do. And, you know, there's some improvements that I have to make going forward about not wanting to waste time but what are you doing I guess as a player for this time of the year what are you trying to work on particularly I think the big thing in this this portion of the year is a lot of it is physical I mean it's just a little bit mental and in, in meetings you have some set time to meet and kind of intro some of the playbook and just scheme and all those things for some of the new guys and old guys because there's things that change every year that you adjust in your scheme like there's a lot, a lot of stuff that we're that we're adjusting and trying to make better uh, moving forward. So that's going to be, it's going to be good for us. So we got to learn that and get comfortable with it. But really physically, this is the time of year where I feel like you can devote most of your time to physically training, getting stronger, you know, getting your body ready for what's, what's going to come. And that takes a lot of time. You know, you don't, you can't just start doing that in training camp. It's too late. You know, you're going to break down. So um, really that's kind of what I focus on this time of year is getting my body where I want it to be come training camp. And then, Obviously, you start building the chemistry with guys, too, that are new, especially. You know, there's guys that have now played with two or three years that, um, you know, we, obviously you still work and you, you build that. But the guys that are new, you got to get out there and, and, and get the reps, get the throws, get the timing, um, get the work with the guys up front, you know, all that stuff. In terms of that chemistry, the guy Gabe Davis, how important can this be to, to kind of start getting on the same page with him? Really important, yeah. I mean, we have, well, it's, it's April and we got until um, – shoot into into July or whatever for until training camp starts so you have all this time to to get ready for training camp so when training camp comes you feel pretty good you don't want to be trying to figure out timing when training camp comes really you want to you want to feel sharp and crisp so you can use that time to just really get better at what we do our concepts our schemes advancing all the stuff that we do you know whether that's 
checks and communicating all those things that's really what that's more for not trying to just t uh, time up routes with guys like you're kind of behind the eight ball if you're at that point uh, you're watching the rest of the league rest of the division really load up on offense and playmakers uh, are you watching that and also do you feel like you have enough here yeah I do um, it's um, stuff happens every off season you know I think it's you, you gotta you gotta still play the season. You gotta play uh, 17 games, and a lot can happen. And everyone makes wants to make a huge deal in the off season of different moves that happen. And yeah, I mean we have a really good division. There's no denying that. You know we got we got good quarterbacks, good offenses, good defenses. Um, it's a really competitive division. But for us, it doesn't change anything. You're gonna have to go through all these teams anyways if you want to go win a Super Bowl. So you're not gonna you're not gonna dodge and get to play teams that aren't very good. Um, there's really not that many in the league anyway. So. It always changes by the time the season comes. Um, some teams that you think might be great maybe don't have a great year. Some teams that you didn't think were going to be really any good have a great year. So there's a lot of work that has to be done from now until training camp and through training camp to get ready for the year. Um, I like the guys that we have. And obviously the draft's coming up too. I'm sure we'll get some, some more pieces there um, and just continue to get some, some good younger guys. But I, I love the guys that we have and what we've started to build here. And we got some new pieces this off season. Um, on the defense side of the ball, uh, what they're doing over there look, looks great, looks awesome. And, and Ryan, I love him and his scheme and what he's trying to do. So excited about that too. Um, obviously that doesn't really have anything to do with me, but that's going to help. And um, yeah, I, I like where we're at. I like obviously Gabe was huge. Mitch was a great pickup. Um, all the guys that we got back that we re-signed, uh, I'm excited. When Ryan got hired, he mentioned what stood out about you and the offense when you guys played. What stood out about like, his scheme and Falcons defense when you know you guys yeah. played London? I would say, uh, and, and who knows, you know, this I haven't talked to him really in depth about what he's going to do here necessarily, but he's very he just he's really good at disrupting or his players, his scheme, his defense is really good at disrupting timing. You know, they they press, they're really physical on the outside, um, not a lot of free access, letting guys get off the ball. They mix in the shell coverages a lot, even with some pressures. Um, they're really good up front. Run discipline is really good. Um, yeah, I mean, those are just the, the main things I'd say, especially in coverage. It's, it's tough when they, they press and they play man, they press, they play zone, they disguise stuff really well. They're really physical. And when you can't, when guys don't get out and don't, aren't on time and you have a good pass rush, it's really hard as a quarterback because then you're, you're moving around, your timing's thrown off, you're trying to find a spot to throw, your receiver isn't there yet because they got pressed. You know, I think they do, or he does now, us, uh, he does a, a great job of that. Doug has been uh, non committal so far about calling plays so far. So if you expect press to be the guy calling plays, does it matter to you? I mean, whatever, whichever way that goes, we're going to. We're going to make the most of it, and, and it's going to be great. I don't know. I haven't had any conversations about you know anything necessarily changing or staying the same. I, so I don't really know. I'm with you guys, but um, no. I mean, I, I think we've had success with with both guys calling the plays in the past, um, and even even last year. Obviously, we could have been better offensively, but uh, we did have some success. And I, I do like the continuity, the consistency that I that I have with Press. I know him really well. Um, you know, I think that that's a that's a good thing that we're, we're keeping that intact because it's hard as a quarterback to change, to change around, to change systems, to change play callers all the time. Um, that that can be difficult. So I like where we're at, and I, I think that we've made some really necessary changes this off season already, and now we just got to implement them and, and get great at it. You know, I think it's about creating creating an identity and and being really good at what we do, um, and I think we have a clear vision and picture of what that is, and I'm excited. You know, and and you know. I'm expecting it to be pressed at this point because that's that's kind of the direction we've been heading and, and what I what I expect and I'm not hearing anything. So that's that's where we're going and uh, I'm excited for it. Just to piggyback off that, how much do you view this as your offense now? Three years continuity, the stuff you just talked about. A lot. I mean, yeah, that's it's it's our offense. You know, at, at the end of the day, I'm the one out there pulling the trigger. Um, but it is our offense, and they do a really good job of including me in things that we might maybe we want to change or something that we did last year that maybe didn't work too well or that doesn't make a lot of sense in our scheme. So there's been a lot of changes that we've made. So I'm excited to to really see those on the field with the guys. That's obviously what gives you your answer. You know, you got to do what works and what our guys do well. So we, we got to check that box. But I'm really excited to see um, how the offense looks. And I do view it as my offense at the end of the day. I'm the one out there 
you know, pulling the trigger, running the plays, running the show. And, um, you know, I got to be able to perform and, and, and like what we're doing. So I feel like I've taken a lot of ownership of, of speaking up when I maybe don't like something or, or saying, I really love this, like, let's do more of that or whatever it is. Um, and they've done a, a good job of communicating with me and talking me through things and, and listening to my feedback. I'm assuming you never went through an injury stretch like that in your career at yeah. any level. What did you learn about you during that whole stretch? Did you find out some, you, you regret maybe trying to play through some of those things or, or you know, what, what's your takeaway from all that? I don't really regret, I don't regret necessarily the decisions I made. I think the thing to learn about it is maybe the way I play. Maybe there's some times where I can avoid some hits. Um, you just got to stay healthy. You know, the teams that get better every week and that stay healthy are usually the teams that, that go pretty far and in, into the playoffs and win the Super Bowl. So um, especially at quarterback, you got to stay healthy. So that's that's something I, I've learned is uh, also, too, if you're not healthy and you can't practice, it's, it's hard to it's hard to play well. And that's something that I want to take more ownership of, of making sure whatever it is I have to do, maybe it's taking less hits, maybe it's doing, you know, throwing the ball away, doing certain things or uh, whatever I can do to stay healthy is just being able to continue to practice and prepare during the week. So I feel like I can put my best performance out there on Sunday and give us a chance to win. I feel like late in the year, I didn't, I didn't do that enough. You know, I had some, I had a handful of games where I didn't feel like I played well and, you know, missed some throws and did some stuff that I thought was uncharacteristic. And um, so I, I regret how it turned out, but I always have said, if I can play and I feel like I'm not hurting the team, and maybe some weeks I did, you know, but I feel like I, I did the best I could and went out there and I would expect I would expect the same of my teammates. So if I expect that from guys and late in the season to play and um, to really play through some stuff, it's football, you're gonna have to, then I have to do the same. And I felt like that's what I was doing. And um, so no, I think it's the biggest thing is just getting my body to a point where I can withstand a lot of these hits or whatever it is, but also limiting some of them as much as I can. So it's it's a balance of all that. Thanks. Awesome, Appreciate thank y'all. Good to see y'all, good to be back. Sides are gonna, you know, benefit from that from that move. Okay. Yep. Gonna be different though. For sure. Gonna be different. Not watching uh, NBA guys, but I think watching guys play more the right way will benefit the program and hopefully stay longer than one year. You know, no knock on on that style of a play is very exciting, but trying to actually build a program and win games, you know, when they count, yeah. I think that'll be exciting for Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So why now on the contract extension? What do you mean by that? Why now? Like why, you know, you decided like a year left. Why, well, why was the timing right for you guys? Yeah, I mean, initially with the, with the contract, you know, the, the guarantee was up after two years. So it was really depending on what the team wanted to do. So I talked to my agent and said, if, you know, they're trying to keep me around. I'm, I'm playing, you know, pretty good football right now. Um, I, I want to stay a Jaguar and, uh, you know, I, I, Talked with Coach Nielsen before this, before the extension and everything. I had a lot of confidence where he could take my game personally. Um, and I just wanted to play for coaches who trusted me and an organization who trusted me rather than, you know, hitting the whole market again after this year and stuff. So uh, kind of gives me some security, helps the team out with cap space probably. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about if you guys respect me and, and like me around, I definitely want to be here. Of Nielsen so far. Did you hear much about him? About anybody you still knew in Atlanta? Yeah, so I knew a lot of the guys in Atlanta. Uh, hit him up right away about you know the kind of guy he is or the, how he coaches and stuff. Uh, pretty hard nose. A lot of good energy coming from him. Uh, you know, already, you know, kind of runs a, a straight ship. Uh, I think it, it, the guys will respond very well to that, keeping guys accountable, and we're all going to play as hard as we can for him. Like this game too. Uh, we really haven't gotten too deep into schematics, but there's just watching the way that Atlanta played last year and the Saints before that. I think he got uh, a lot of his defenses from that. Um, just watching the way they play. They play aggressive. They attack. They're downhill. They play fast all over. It's all about effort. And I think that's where he's going to keep our standard to. Um, playing hard, playing aggressive. Uh, if we, we just take those um, outside of scheme, just take that style of play, I think a, a good deal of things will happen for us. Wait, how much uh, just the freshness of a new voice, a uh, new scheme, new style, those kind of help a defense? Just um, can it get stale? Can it get monotonous? I don't know about stale. It's the NFL, so like every week, you know, you're playing for your life, you're playing for your job, you're playing for a lot of things, whatever your why is. Um, I don't think anything ever gets stale and monotonous. I think, you know, a new guy coming, you know, with with his energy and passion, you maybe feel that that might give you a little jump start. 
But at the end of the day, what you were doing last year wasn't working. So now that's why you have this new coach. And we're all excited to get this thing jumped off on the right way and improve ourselves, improve our defense. And we got new guys coming in who've, who've played on you know, high caliber defenses. So whatever they're seeing, you know, we're all receptive to it. Whatever the coach wants us to do, we're receptive to it because we know we have to be better than last year. Did you look forward to getting back in the building and getting the team together? Oh, I get excited. I get excited just that first workout, you know, people start breathing, lungs heavy. Like we're getting back to, you know, being athletes to how we're supposed to be. Um, you know, it's part of the job description. Uh, and then everybody coming in and doing it together just makes it all exciting. But um, I, like, I like being around my boys and stuff. Uh, this makes the job so much more fun. What does Eric Armstead bring to the defense? Kind of like what I was saying earlier, uh, play, play great defense, and he was part of a great defense. Um, great player, part of a great defense. So uh, not only his abilities on the field, but his leadership as well, uh, holding that whole room to a standard, uh, being able to be an example, and then coming, you know, seeing what he sees needs to, we need to do differently, and um, try to implement things that he knows works the whole defense. To focus on for your game at this time of year. At this time, just right now, it's uh, getting my body back to to where to play in shape. Um, obviously, it's a progress or you know a long ways away, but you want to make sure you're doing it the right way, uh, putting those building blocks in, not trying to go too fast. You know, making sure you're you're still up to speed though, uh, moving right, and then just learning the game. We got a new coordinator, new scheme. Learn the game, watching the film, uh, being able to play fast when when your numbers call when we start getting back out there. How long did it take for the way it ended last year to go in the rear view? Or is yeah, that still not, motivation? Yeah, it'll never be in a rear view. Maybe next year after the season. I mean, I got a lot of questions on it throughout the off season, and it's hard to, to think about um, just when it even started. Uh, we started off winning, but we weren't winning convincingly how maybe the score might have showed, but we knew that we weren't playing our best football. And I think a lot of those things caught up to us and then trying to right our wrongs a little too late in the season, then it's a little bit more stressful when teams are hitting their stride and we're trying to find out how to do things right. Um, yeah, that, that hurt for sure. And I think it will fuel us. Uh, everybody's committed to doing things right this time around. Um, you know, you, you don't want to say, we don't want to get in that position again. And it starts from the first game all the way to the last, you know, uh, but just keep it improving. Every week, no matter what the scoreboard is, you know, keeping our standard every week. Because sometimes you win games that you didn't play your best. Now you don't learn from them if you're not trying to get better. Uh, I think that kind of happened to us, and we're not going to do that this year. Boy, how uh, much does your job role change scheme to scheme? As a linebacker, you pretty much have the same job description. Uh, you know, be the captain of the defense, lead them, call out what you see. Um, now the, the techniques and stuff might change in terms of how you play a play, but kind of all, always the same, like being a linebacker. So I, I have the utmost confidence in myself to be able to adapt to whatever the scheme change is going to be. But there is going to be a scheme change for sure. Do you think, um, like I think you might have mentioned already a couple weeks ago, this, this one could allow you to make more plays just based on mm -hmm. the style, the scheme. Right, so everybody has a, a part in the defense. I'm trusting everybody's going to do their part. Uh, we talked about, I'm sure, if you watch the film, playing in lighter boxes, uh, but dominating in lighter boxes as well. Not just being able to get through rundowns in a lighter box, be able to, you know, make your plays and stuff. So um, I think I talked about earlier, keeping our, like, matching your coverages more. Um, it's just the way, you know, his defense is set up. But I'm excited to play in it. The changes this, this off season, does this feel like a breath of fresh air, fresh start for you guys? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to get uh, rolling breath of fresh air. I'm still, I'm not really caught up on last year, but I know I have to get better from last year. The defense has to get better from last year. And I'm very happy that everybody kind of has that intensity from this first day anyway, about, you know, making the right strides towards the rest of this off season. You mentioned earlier, you wanted to be here. Some of the other leaders on the team that have had free agents like Evan Ingram, Josh Allen have said the same thing. That's not something that players with that logo have said a lot over the course of the history. How much does that speak to the buy-in that's on this team in this locker room. Yeah, I think we have a great locker room, first and foremost. A lot of the guys always have a chip on their shoulder. So when you come here and you're working with other guys, the chip on their shoulder, like it's just uh, infectious uh, how, how, how much we want to play with each other, for each other, uh, always for the brothers. And then when things don't go our way, like last year, you know, a lot of weight kind of, you know, we carry a lot of the weight, you know, those guys that you said uh, mentioned earlier. So we just want to get it right together. Um, 
And I, I feel like, you know, not getting it right, let, you kind of let your brothers down a little bit. You let the guys in the organization down, you know, up top and stuff because they feel that same pain that we do just the same. Like, it, it hurt a lot. So bringing new guys in, you know, we're, they see how hard we're working, trying to right our wrongs and stuff. But um, I think the reason why we wanted to stay is we wanted to get it right. We have a beautiful opportunity as leaders here. So if they all trust us to do it, let's go do it. Josh Allen is in here talking about he wants to leave a legacy here. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big thing with him. Does that kind of resonate with you? And, and how do you see that sort of manifesting with him? Some of the things that resonate with me, yeah. like leaving legacy here. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's as soon as I stepped in the league, um, I always wanted him to take the next step, get a little bit better. Um, you know, coming up to this point in my career, it's always about the next step, next step, becoming a better player. I feel like last year I didn't take uh, as much of the step as I wanted to, me personally. So it's all about, um, for me, becoming a player I always wanted to be. I know I always knew I could be. Uh, and then, you know, coming into this year, like you said, leaving a legacy, leaving a mark. I want to be respected around the league. And then, you know, for me, un unfortunately, individual stats and stuff don't leave that mark for me. So I know. I need my boys to play their best. I need, I need to play my best. And if we keep winning games, then I'll, you know, leave that legacy, have that respect that I, I feel like I want. Um, you know, Josh, he was drafted here, so his looks a little bit different than mine. Uh, just being a Jag for so long, um, you know, being that kind of face of the franchise, look on defense and stuff. Like it's, it's, I'm all happy for him, and, and you know, his goals may look a little bit different than mine in that way. But now he's earned his contract, so he's kind of on the same path as me now. Play his best. Get the Jags more wins. That's how to increase his his legacy left. You know, here in Jacksonville. Do a lot of guys in the league or in locker rooms and stuff talk about legacy as well? Is that? A I think it's kind of just felt. Um, and, and then you know, when you get third contract for me, like what keeps you going? It's not money no more. Um, you know, my financial advisor will call me about how much I'm, and I was like, that's, the the contract. You know, I I, I didn't. Uh, he's he's probably going to hear this first time. I didn't even crack a smile for real. I was kind of drab in my response. Like, yeah, we got the deal done, but like, what am I here to do? You signed me here to win more games. And I think everybody around me is going to feel that. I'm um, attacking this off season, trying to do that. Um, when I'll be happy when we make the playoffs and win these games. Um, that's what I'm here for. Boy, along those lines, like, I mean, Josh just had a monster season. You've had big years. Like, how hard when you set that standard? Is it to go duplicate it or, or surpass it? I think you can't be looking in the rear view, trying to trying to um, do what you did last year. Your body gets older. You got to be able to improve a little bit every day. You know, starting with let's say OTAs again. Um, get your body feeling how you need it to feel. But you should be going back instead of saying I need to do that. How to how can I get better at that? Because your body might slow down. But there's ways to play better still. And Josh, you know, he's still young and everything. Um, his body will probably feel the same. So how do I improve on what I did last year? Maybe in a new scheme, uh, what can I do to, to, one, play the scheme right, but two, make my plays as well for the team? Is there a feeling out process as you get to know some of the new coaches like Coach House? For sure, for sure. But uh, they, they, they attack right away. So like even that first defensive meeting, like, you know, it's, it's uh, pretty intense. Um, I think they're going to say how they want stuff done, and we're going to have to do what they want. Now we'll get to some flexibility when we're all – confident in the scheme and stuff, and I'll be able to bounce ideas off of them. But I think that they have a, a way they want to play, a standard that they want to be us to play at, and we're going to have to match that. Can you describe the improvement you saw out of Trayvon Walker his second season? A lot of confidence in his own ability, I think, and then you know, trusting his techniques that he's been practicing in the off season, and then Josh playing well on top of that, and then them playing off of each other definitely did well. I think a relentless motor he's always had, um, you know, when hit, when Things got tough in games. We told him you know, we need sacks and we need pressure on the quarterbacks. I think he's always been able to pressure the quarterback about finishing. Uh, and I know some games they had a lot of pressures and no sacks. They would be on the sideline kicking themselves. I'm like, bro, we're winning. They'd be kicking themselves. Um, so I'm liking that out of them. But I think just that that pressure they put on themselves in order to be, I won't say perfect, but play at the high, highest level of football that they know they can propel them to play that well. You talked about not wanting to forget what happened last season. Why is it important for you guys to sort of carry that forward with you in terms of how it ended, why you need to get better? Why is it important? Because if we do what we did last season, we'll be exactly where we were last season. And it's no joke the AFC South got better. So if we want to be able – it's like we got who we got in a, in a, in a locker room right now, and that's what we're going to take to war with us. So if we want to be able to come on top, 
in the AFC South, like all of us are going to have to get better. You know, we can't squeak by games where we're not playing well. You're going to have the team that plays the best in the conference is going to be able to win these games. I don't really care what the roster looks like. When you go in on Sundays, you play better than the other team and you win. Like that's got to be us playing better. So let's get better every day so that when we're there on Sunday, we have the confidence that we know we can play. Thanks, boy. Thanks, boy. Thanks, boy. Thanks, boy. All right. Appreciate it for you.